Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, lots of uh, announcements, so uh, please, please sit down if you would. Uh, just uh, a reminder that um, our annual meeting is coming up uh, on the 19th of April. Uh, that is here in church at seven o'clock and um, we've lost um, some people from our PCC uh, not that they're still wandering around looking lost uh, but um, we do need to get back the numbers on our PCC uh, it's an important role to play within our church um, and so they are voted for at our annual meeting on the 19th of April um, so there are some nomination forms um, at the back on there. Yes. On the table at the back. At the table at the back. So even if you don't nominate yourself, then please twist somebody's arm to do so, and you can second them. You can nominate them and uh, uh, and, uh, and support them in their in their application to be part of the PCC. Uh, it'd be nice if we could actually have to have a, an election. <laughs> He says in hope. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, and, you know, if you're unsure about anything, please talk to me or, or Anne afterwards, and that'll be fine. I've got a whole long list here, but most of them are great part of it, but I've got to work my way through them to make sure that I uh, say the ones that I'm meant to say here. Uh, next Sunday, of course, is Palm Sunday, and we are reverting back to our procession. And we've got a, hopefully, a, a real live donkey to lead the procession. Uh, that starts at Church Farm, as you know, around the corner, at quarter to 11. And the service begins here in church at approximately 11 o'clock. Uh, and of course, the donkey will lead us right into church and then disappear out of that door there. <laughs> uh, so that's next Sunday. And of course, it's a benefit service, so there'll be lots of us, um, hopefully. Um, but if you just want to come to the service at 11, that's fine. It would be great if we could have a, a proper procession um, through uh, around the corner here to church. But well, that's next Sunday. If you're part of the Lent course, just a reminder that we've come to our last week. If you want to go to the afternoon session, it's at Great Barford at half past two on Wednesday afternoon. If you want to come to the evening session, um, it's here in Roxton in the room at the back and that's at 7.30 on Friday. Even if you haven't been to any of the others, I'm sure it'd be worth coming to our final session um, if you can make it. The chrism service is um, at the cathedral on Monday, Thursday. The chrism service um, Eucharist is where the oils for anointing are blessed for the year and distributed amongst the parishes, but also at that service the clergy and the licensed lay ministers and the bishops indeed uh, renew their vows for the year. Um, and uh, in the bishop's words, come and support your clergy. I think that's me. <laughs> um, so if you'd like to come to that, I need to know numbers and I have to give numbers in by tomorrow because after the service there is a cup of drink, cup of tea or coffee and a hot cross bun for everybody. Um, so they want to get the numbers right. So if you could let me know if you, you're wishing to come to that service, that's Maudie Thursday, 11 o'clock in the morning at the cathedral. Continuing on with the Maudie Thursday theme, we have our Benefice Agape meal at Blunham in the evening at six o'clock, uh, where there'll be soup, bread and cheese and celery um, and again if you'd like to come to that please let uh, Sheila Ashley know at Blunham um, for numbers purposes so that we can cater for the right number um, on that day so it's Maundy Thursday six o'clock in the evening at Blunham and of course Maundy Thursday being part of Holy Week you'll find I think it's in Pew News as well as the Rivers Meet Recorder our services for Holy Communion throughout the week, um, Holy Week, and we begin um, on Monday at Blunham, um, and then on Tuesday we're here at 12.30, uh, 
and then Wednesday there is the normal communion at Great Barford at 10.45. And then on Thursday, as I already mentioned, the, the Agape meal. On Friday, we're at Thamesford for the Good Friday Liturgy, that's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Or if you're feeling particularly energetic, um, there's Messy Church at Plum as well on that morning. Um, so if you come to, come to those, we're well and good. Then on Saturday, we have the service of the first kindling, first light kindling um, in Great Barford. That's at 8 o'clock in the evening, simply because it needs to be dark, really, um, for to have a full effect. We begin the service in darkness. And then we light the Paschal candles, all four will be lit on that evening. And then we have a joyous um, celebration, um, which includes the Holy Eucharist on that evening. So that's eight o'clock on Easter Saturday, eight o'clock in the evening, Easter Saturday. And then of course on Easter day itself, there is a service here in the morning, at, I can't remember what time, 9.30. Yes, 9.30. Uh, we're here on Easter Sunday a full celebration of the Easter festival. I think that's it. <laughs> I think I've exhausted my list for here. Um, so if you want to ask me afterwards, um, please do so. If something you've not remembered, or I've not remembered to tell you, uh, please do ask me afterwards. And now I have some bands of marriage to read on top of all that. <laughs> I published the bands of marriage between Ivor Allen Gibson of the parish of Colmworth and Felicity Jane Irons of the parish of St Martin's Bedford. If any of you know cause or just impediment why this couple should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is for the second time of asking. Let's pray for Ivy, Ivor and Felicity in their wedding preparations. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of love. We thank you for the love that has been found between Ivor and Felicity. We pray that you would bless them in their wedding preparations and in the days that follow their wedding day. Be with them now, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I told you about Barford. Um, with all those announcements, there might, be not, might not be time for a sermon, but I think we might fit something in. <laughs> so we're going to stand and sing our first here, 536, with Sing the Praise of Him Who Died, 536.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. So we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit. Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. So we make our confession together as we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the collect for today, Passion Sunday. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we hear our first two readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a whip. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honour me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone, else has if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, 
of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as seen the gradual hymn 501, there's a wideness in God's mercy, 501. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. 
But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Heavenly Christ. Now I speak in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit. As already indicated, today's thought and referred to as Passion Sunday. And here we see the beginning of the road to Jerusalem, Holy Week, Good Friday, and of course finally Easter Day. A dinner party is arranged in celebration of the raising of Lazarus. You can picture the scene. Imagine you're sitting in a theatre and up on the stage is this scenario being played out right in front of you. The scene is set. There is Martha, busy doing all the preparation, preparing the meal, probably be doing a bit of cleaning and a bit of dusting, you know, making sure that everything's in its place and everything is right, practically speaking, of course, for the visit of Jesus and this special celebratory dinner. So that's Martha. What about Jesus? Jesus is probably sitting there waiting. And of course Judas is close by. As well as the other disciples, they're not really mentioned here, but you can picture the scene that Jesus and his disciples have come to this celebratory dinner in honour of Lazarus raising from the dead. And as Mary is there, she decides that she's going to anoint Jesus' feet with this expensive perfume. And not only that, she's going to wipe his feet with her hair in an acknowledgement of his love and his persona. But as you picture that scene in front of you on that stage, somehow you can feel there's a little bit of tension going on between the various players that are there in front of you. And here in this short scene, there are a few things which we need to look at and deal with. So first of all, there is this celebratory meal, a way of giving thanks for the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead. You can imagine that there, there might be a bit of a buzz about the place, about the room that they're in. A joyous occasion giving thanks for Lazarus raising. Lazarus is now with them. Once he was in the tomb, but now he is with them, alive and there for this celebratory dinner. And the second, there is the difference between Martha and Mary. Martha being the practical one, you know, doing the cooking, doing the dusting and the cleaning or whatever it was, just to make sure that everything is right as Jesus comes to this dinner. And then there is Mary, the contemplative one. Recognising the situation that they find themselves. It's almost as though she knows that Jesus is coming towards his death. Jesus had told them many times that he was going to die. And I don't think they really believed it. But somehow Mary in this situation has some understanding of what's going on in the background. 
And then there is Judas, the keeper of the disciples' purse, the treasurer, if you like, <laughs> always thinking about the expenditure and if we do this, can we afford it? Can we buy, afford to do that, buy this? He's always thinking about the money. And what of Jesus? Here he is in the midst of them, and all this is going on around him. And you can just imagine him sitting there, making mental notes of what is happening. And realising that there is a bit of an atmosphere in the room. Of course he knows about Judas. He knows that Judas is the one that's dipping his hand into the purse and taking what's been given to them. He knows, he knows Judas' heart, what is in the centre of it. So what did prompt Mary to make such an extravagant gesture? Some writers suggest that it is her love for Jesus. It puts into her mind that I must do this, I must honour him in this way. Others think that she's just out there to outdo Martha. Oh well, Martha's getting on with all the practical stuff. But I'm going to sit and I'm going to sit with Jesus. And I'm going to do and perform this act of anointing him in this way. Don't care about the cost of the perfume. This is what I want to do, to show my love for him. This is what I want to do for my Jesus. Not only does she anoint him, but she uses her hair to dry off his feet. As Judas, as Jesus attends his dinner, in recognition of Lazarus being brought from the tomb, there appears to be a need for reconciliation. It's almost as though Jesus says yes to this dinner because he wants to bring them all together. His disciples and Martha and Mary and of course Lazarus. He wants to make sure that they are supportive of each other as they move forward. And of course Jesus knows what's coming in the next few days. I'm not sure the disciples understood that at all. Jesus here is indicating that his work of his earthly ministry is coming to a close. Jesus says, make the most of me while you've got me. You'll always have the poor around you. Something we've been discussing in our, in our late groups about having people around us that are poor. No matter what we do, it's never enough. Jesus says, I won't always be here with you. You won't always be able to do such things as Mary has done. Because of course Judas is thinking, oh, we could have sold that. What are you doing? We could have sold it and given the money to the poor. He might have taken his 10% out as well. <laughs> Who knows? But Jesus rebukes him and says, no, leave her alone. Let her do what she wants to do. You'll always have the poor with you. I'm not here for much longer. This is, whichever way we look at it, look at it, there is a pivotal moment as we draw near to the most important days in Jesus' life, his earthly life. Jesus is about to die in love for his disciples and in love for everyone. Every one of us. When these days come to pass, then things will change for the better. All the things that Jesus has said and done, the commands he has given, and the consequences that will ensue that we've been looking at over the past few weeks, should we decide not to follow him. They are all now coming to the fall. Drawing close to the end of Lent. 
The time when we pray and study and think. And as we draw to a close this season, we really need to make some sort of conclusion. We could go on thinking forever and ever, but as this season comes to a close, we need to think about where we stand in our relationship with God. What have we learned as, as we've studied and prayed and thought? I hope that those who attended the link course, they, they will have learned something, perhaps of themselves, of other people. And something has changed. Something will change in their lives because of their speaking with God, as they're studying, as they're thinking about discipleship. And I hope that as we draw close to the season of Lent, and as we look forward to the sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every one of us, in his love for us, then we will move forward in our life of discipleship. Not sit back and think, well, I'm all right. I've done the things after asked of me, so I'm fine. Our faith should be something that grows and grows and grows deeper into God as each day passes. And as we look at this scenario in front of us, I wonder who you can associate with in our picture. Who are you close, most closely linked to? Could it be Lazarus? Joy's celebration of his rising? Could it be Martha, the practical one? Could it be Mary who, who worships and honours Jesus in this way? Could it be Judas? I hope not. As we think about our relationship with God, what have we learned from this season of Lent? What do we want to change in our lives that will draw us closer to Jesus Christ? So we were thinking about the other week that will bear fruit for him. What has changed? How have we moved forward? And you can answer that. It's between you and God. I pray that your life will be deeper into him as we have thought and studied in this season of Lent. Amen. Amen. <coughs> as we consider Christ's words and actions, I invite you now to stand as we affirm our faith, as we say the Queen together.
said for our prayers for intercession. I invite you now to stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. So we offer one another a sign of God's peace as we wave to each other. Kissing in the back row. <laughs> <laughs>
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Going to use Eucharistic prayer E, which you'll find on page 10 of the service booklet. There is a special preface after the opening responses for Passion Sunday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right, right to give thanks to us. It is indeed right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as this time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever, our Advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the night. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Please sit. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed, destroyed our death. death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord, Lord Jesus, come in glory. glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. going to use the right hand version of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table as the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to stand up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose name is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may have more dwell in him and to be in us.
Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that we do for what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please would you stand for the blessing and dismissal before we sing our final hymn. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. We sing our final hymn, number 30. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Number 30.
for the mercy of God, rest in peace. And rise in glory. Amen.